Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to one of my shorties, brought to you by you fine folks who have been sponsoring this series on Patreon. I want to give a quick thank you to all of you who are doing so. You guys make it. So I actually have free time to bring you these fine videos. Now, if you watched one of my last uh, Real Board Lecture series, you saw a new player, a Japanese player, Shibano Torimaru, who had a bit of an unusual style. But you know what? You know what? When I was doing uh, that, that particular game, in the back of my head, I didn't really want to say it, but in the back of my head, I was thinking, you know, if that's all this guy is, he is not going to be around for very long. Because sooner or later, they'll just figure out how not to give someone like the entire middle of the board and after that I mean, what, what do you have if that's like the thing that you do take Yi Cheng Ho for example he let you get away with everything they found out how to deal with the style and he kind of had to adjust it's a bit rough I imagine but this game this game really quickly that I wanted to bring to your attention showed me something very, very interesting. This game is uh, Shimano Toyomaru as Black versus Orisi, a uh, professional Nindan in Japan. Very, very, very heavy caliber player. He's playing this guy in the Japanese Tengen preliminary. So this guy apparently is trying to go after a title. And he won his first game in the prelim, so that that was interesting. But how he won it, how he won it, was very interesting to me. And I hope you find it interesting as well. Um, now the game opens up obviously with a pretty straightforward opening in terms of both players. Nothing unusual here. The game continues with a rather aggressive variation where Black approaches the corner and then decides to not continue the Joseki here, but approach here as well. This gives us potential to, you know, begin making frameworks or whatever. We've got light stones and expansionary stones on the board. So we're leaning towards, okay, maybe one trick pony again. He's just kind of going after that influence, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. This approach move I thought was very, very interesting by uh, by White. He's approaching high two space, making it a little bit more unlikely that his opponent is going to be able to, let's say, uh, keep building up influence as he is tends to uh, like to do. He is finding something else to do here instead, forcing his opponent to take on a more territorial approach while White settles trying to disrupt the idea of this player's going to get influence. From here, we see something interesting. White tried to take a base for himself. Black said, no, you're disrupting what I'm doing. I'm disrupting what you're doing. And now we have two groups over here that suddenly find themselves in need of life. So the question now becomes, what kind of game is this influential player going to back off and play? Is he going to uh, still try and play influence? Or, as we see rapidly developing, is he comfortable getting into a fighting game? Here we quickly have our answer. White is hitting, seeing if there's Aji over in the corner. White says, or Black says, yes, there absolutely is. What are you going to do about it? White says, well, I'm going to cut you to pieces, because if you don't seem to care about this, I know I'm going to make you care about this. And thus, we find ourselves completely cut off here, surrounded in the corner. These stones are completely dead yet. However, by not defending here, you're saying that's completely OK, because what I'm going to do uh, from all of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make myself safe, and I'm going to keep attacking you. So it looks like maybe this uh, young Japanese professional does go after influence, but he doesn't seem to mind getting into a fight. As you can see here, the game rapidly takes a turn, where uh, the younger player, the Japanese uh, influence-oriented player, we see him as black, getting a bit uh, surrounded here by White's influence. He suddenly, uh, on the other end of <laughs> the other end of the rope, he's now suddenly the one being attacked with influence. 
But since it's uh, black's move, last move played here, of course, by white, can simply jump out, save his stones, and be relatively okay. White not wanting to simply passively uh, make a base for himself and live, tries to counterattack uh, black stones, unfortunately has to fix his shape, unless he gets cut through. This gives Sente to Black, who pokes out all of the eye shape, and then promptly proceeds to try to surround the white stones. So, it looks like he's able to go against some of the top players and fight on, on equal footing. He doesn't seem to be having any kind of problem with this. He sees a professional 9-down, professional 9-down, pretty strong in his own right, tries to counterattack him, but he's able to turn that attack right back where he wants it on these weak stones of white and ask him, how are you living? What are you going to do? The answer to that becomes immediately apparent. Any attempt to simply solidify himself and escape this position without giving something up is horribly denied by black. If white wants to live here, he's got to be giving something up. Obviously, pros aren't usually in the line of doing so, and so fights continue to ensue. I mean, this is crazy. He's got this group pretty well on the ropes. I mean, this thing is not doing so well. Fortunately enough, white does find a counterattack here, and the game continues. What absolutely sealed the deal for my love of this particular guy, oh my god, we have a situation over here, it looks pretty straightforward. Black stones are in trouble, we have a double Atari, surely we can use Atari here and go ahead and get free. Now, interesting thing about that is what uh, Black chooses to do instead. He chooses to Atari from the bottom here, and can anyone tell me why? anyone tell me why? He does not do the double Atari. No, 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 no. He is doing this Atari instead. And what we're going to see from the next few moves of white is the answer. Feel free to pause the video here, take a look at the situation, figure out what is going on in this game if you so wish. doesn't respond here. If he does, there's a throne and then it's captured. White instead says, I'm going to build up this area here. It looks right for development. Then maybe I can probably go and defend here, force you to protect this. If you're protecting here, protecting there, you're probably not doing anything about this area. So he's trying to remain in control of this game. Black's move, on the other hand, I'm in love with. He doesn't get distracted with what White wants him to do over here. He does not answer the stone. Instead, he cuts. He cuts, he cuts, he cuts. White says, that's fine. You can go ahead and cut. Black says, are you sure about that? White says, I missed my bowl there. White says, yep, absolutely sure about that. Looks like we're good to go. Black extends. This is usually exactly what you want here. We have these two stones being nicely killed. This group now nicely alive. Might even be able to play here. Who knows? Looks like there's some degree of trouble. And we've got a group trying to live when we've got this stone that needs an answer. We've got these stones that need something. And this cutting stone that wants to be played so badly. So it looks like we're getting a perfect storm of a bunch of crap that Black is not going to be enjoying very, very shortly. However, however, this Hane is, uh, is amazing. You all just fell in love with this Hane because White Hane back in return allowing black to go ahead and cut, that cut gets connected, and it's not just for Sente moves over on this side, no, 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 no. It is to extend out, because if you take here now, 
if we take this, if this is going to be greedy, we've got that lovely little squeeze play, right? We can play here. Uh, that gets taken. We throw in again. That gets taken. We Atari. That gets filled. We drop down here. One, two, three liberties. One, two, three, four liberties. These are now toast. So we can't play that variation. Hands off. Can't do it. So if we can't do that variation, uh, da, 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 I, I'm always bad at removing these stones. I'm sorry. I'm terrible at this. Um, that's there. I think that's where we are now, right? So if we can't play that, then we can extend. We can extend because we just saw what happens when you Atari. We extend down and then we squeeze. So this now has to be played. But after a quick check, we're fine there as well. Don't have to answer it just yet. Nope, still good. Now what? Now we lost our squeeze. So now we go back and take the stone, allowing black to break into that area that white was just trying to do something with. Have to fight our way and try and take something, but now we're completely uncertain because the, uh, the pressure is now being applied to this group as well. While we're struggling to make any kind of territory in this sort of area. Because keep in mind, things like the 3-3 three, three are still available. Things like the push are still available. A lot of, a lot of Aji still exists within this stone. So, I definitely approve of this player. I'm not going to spoil how this game goes. I just wanted to show you how he can turn a situation, attack his opponent, even when it looked like he was the one being attacked, how the game can progress. You can build an area. He finds a way to get in there and wreck your area. This player, I don't know, maybe one of Japan's top players uh, up and coming. This guy is definitely worth paying attention to. He's someone that I'm going to be paying attention to. And if you know me and the games I go over, I don't, I don't have a very good track record um, studying a lot of Japanese professionals. But when I see his games coming up, I'm definitely paying attention to this guy. Because Shibano Torimaru is definitely going places. He's a professional one done now. Not going to stay there long. There's no way. This guy is reading way too good. So I hope you guys are enjoying this guy's games. I'm probably going to bring you more of them in the future. Link to the game is going to be in the description down below. Check it out. This game is great. Study it. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.